You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Since embarking on this journey and chronicling my experiences, I have come across quite a few systems that I have either only heard of in passing or not at all. Today I'm looking at one such system, the ultra-rare Sam Coupe 8-bit British home computer that was first released in 1989. Interestingly, the machine has many similarities to the ZX Spectrum and in many ways it is a souped up version of the classic computer, designed to be compatible with 48K ZX Spectrum software. Produced by Miles Gordon Technology, a British firm founded by ex-employees of Sinclair Research, the idea was to produce a machine that would be the natural progression for existing Spectrum owners wanting something new. Being architecturally similar to Sinclair's machine, it was able to leverage this and emulate many of the Spectrum's games, but also offer enhanced graphics modes, 512K of memory, and superior audio, and an original games catalog. Unfortunately, at this time we were all excited by the advent of 16-bit home computing, which was beginning to take hold in the UK, and the system failed to take off, with only 12,000 units estimated to have been sold. It was by all intents and purposes a commercial failure. Of course, this means the machine fetches a hefty price on the collector's market. When researching this video, I found very few on sale, but I did find one listed as a mint in box for the princely sum of £1,295. Luckily, emulation comes to the rescue once again, this time via the Sim Coupe emulator by Simon Owen. Astro Ball is your basic bouncy ball platform game where you need to collect items and navigate around the screen. You can control the intensity of the bounce to get to higher platforms as you'd expect. Yes, it's basic, but it's very smooth and enjoyable to play. Regular viewers will know I'm a sucker for Arkanoid clones, and this is no exception. The creatively titled Bats and Balls is a fun Arkanoid clone that looks and sounds great. What more could you want? Boing reminds me of platformers like Dizzy, and I'm sure that it is what they were going for here. Colourful with pretty visuals and nice music, but it's not easy. At least not for me. Fun nevertheless.
If you're waiting to do your driving theory test in the UK, but can't get out right now, you might enjoy this. I don't think road signs have changed much since 1991. Good to know I scored 10 out of 10 in this example. Cross Snake with Pac-Man and you get Snake Mania. A little fiddly as it seems to be keyboard only and it's harder than Snake as you have to navigate a set course to collect the pills without running into your ever increasing Snake. Much more practice required from me it seems. The Bulgulators is a game worthy of inclusion to the Pac-Man ripoffs of the 90s video if I ever get around to making one, as I did for the 1980s. It is Pac-Man but with a bug. No ambiguity here. Since I had to endure many months of disappointment over the fact that Neil from Retro Man Cave was unable to load Pac Mister during his Mattel Aquarius Trash to Treasure series, we of course need to play the next best thing here, Mr. Pac. The Witching Hour looks like a promising point-and-click adventure stroke platformer 
where you get to play as Greta the Good Witch or Beardy the Wizard on a quest to destroy the Demon Master. I will need to invest some more time in this one. I am not a huge fan of isometric games, with tank controls especially, but I must admit that this one does impress visually. Escape from the planet of the robot monsters looks and feels like a computer game B-movie. Lots of robots, computers and other machinery to blow up and areas to explore. This will keep you entertained for a long time, providing you can get used to the controls. So, is the Sam Coupe on my collector's list? Honestly, no. It's far too pricey for my blood. But I'm not opposed to following the system and using emulation to try out many of the more recent titles that are still being produced. The system has a healthy homebrew scene, not as large as some, but there are some dedicated people making software and hardware still for this machine. All the interesting links to this machine are in the description as well as ways to contact me or to support the channel if you desire. And so, until next time, bye bye.